Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. I am so excited for today's show. We're always talking to you about how you can improve your life (laughs) or how you can improve yourself and you can change your life, but it's often exhausted and filled with worry. And how do we know what's best for us anyway? Well, if you've ever wondered if you're trying too hard, striving in the wrong direction, or have no idea where to go or how to right the ship, then do we have the show for you. Today we'll be talking with Tosha Silver, and she's here not a minute too soon. She's the best-selling author of Outrageous Openness and the recently released Change Me Prayers, The Hidden Power of Surrender. Today we're going to talk about a very powerful way to live. It's called Outrageous Openness or how to be open to the world around us and the divine within, or how to seek a divine plan so life happens through us and for us rather than by us. That plus why giving away your Seinfeld collection may (laughs) set you free. (laughs) (laughs) Well, welcome to the show, Tosha. Are you ready to shine? Sure, Michael. Nice to be with you. <laughs> well, so, glad, so glad you brought up the Seinfeld collection for starters, because that's critical. <laughs> that must have been hard. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So before we dive into Seinfeld, uh, I've got to ask, you seem to have a special way in the world. Um, did you really get your money back from somebody like in The Sopranos? You did. That's, so that whole story is really true. I mean, that, the story that's in the book is about a guy who was sort of a scammer and he got $5,000 donations from donations, well, towards from all these donations, various, donations from all these different people and then he sort of, uh, for a business proposal and then he absconded with the money. And for me, because the entire purpose of the book is about moving out of the restriction of my the small self, my, mm-hmm. the, that everything is our money, our show, our efforts, our ambition, our this, and that it's movable through prayer and various techniques. You can move into a place, just like you said, allowing life to happen through you instead of by you, which is infinitely less work. <laughs> so when the guy, on a very practical level, because this isn't just like California airy fairy stuff, on a very practical level, this guy came and took $5,000 from me like everybody else. And I had to go into that place of saying, well, whose money is it anyway? If it's divine in the sense that everything comes through us, mm-hmm. 5000 can be surrendered and then I'll be shown the right actions. So I forgave him yeah. instead of staying mad. And the act of forgiving him, it doesn't condone the behavior. He was still a scammer, but I forgave him and decided I didn't want the anger in my body. Mm -hmm. He had one of his cohorts, one of his thugs, come and give me back the money. And that's the true story. And, And what I write about it in Outrageous Openness is just that I'm fully convinced that staying in that state, I was the only person of my friends that got taken uh that got re- that got the money returned yeah and you, you I, said in the book this guy he, he kind of comes to you like out of the sopranos and goes yeah, he, he never does this <laughs> that's right. he doesn't and i i'm not special i just think because i got to that place of saying god can replace five thousand dollars if it's not from him it's from some other source it's not about the righteous indignation it created the space for him to return the money and if he wasn't going to return it, I didn't care anymore. So I think it's a good starting point for how this process works as opposed to chasing, pushing, grasping. So let's back up then, because I'm guessing you didn't always use this process. And so how did you start to come to this place of, here, let me hand it over to you. You drive the ship. Well, I think a variety of things. One is... What I write about in the book is I got very sick when I was about 30 mm-hmm. and had a This is when you spent about three years? In a bed. Yeah, wow. and it was pretty close to a near-death experience, a sort of protracted near-death experience. Oh, God. <laughs> and I, um, out of that, I really sort of saw that all of my pushing and efforting and striving and trying to be everything for everybody 
had really gotten me to the place that I was in a bed Mm -hmm. for three years. So I needed a different way to approach life. And these ideas of offering to this force of love, it's not like this abstract guy in the sky, but that there's a force of love that I think many people, the way they see that force of love is like, oh, I'm having a terrible problem. Let me invite that force of love in to help me with my problem. This red became flag, very, red very, flag. <laughs> but I think, yeah, what, what it became for me uh, for those years of being sick is what would happen mm-hmm. if it stopped being my problem, my life, my, the small self ownership. And it became, okay, God, if I get out of this illness, this life is now going to belong to you, to this force of love. Now you start to show me the actions you want me to take as opposed to I'm going to give you dictation about the problems I need you to handle for me, which I think is more often how it's approached. This is extremely powerful. And I got to say back to the, just briefly back to your story. I love how it, it, you were like in one place you weren't even willing to, to almost take care of yourself hygienically. You were yeah. barely doing it. And then totally. you went down to a dumpster and there's Ganesh waiting for you. <laughs> totally. It's so it's totally true. Yeah, I had just, I'd given up completely. Mm-hmm. I w- was barely bathing. I was barely eating. I just was absolutely hopeless because the illness had gone on so long. And I went down to the trash place in the apartment where I was staying. And there was a pristinely wrapped poster from India of Lord Ganesh, who's the remover of obstacles, <laughs> sitting there waiting. Like, I don't even know who on earth would <laughs> throw such a thing away. And I took him upstairs, and that was the first time that uh, I actually even had anything on my wall. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. The cell got decorated. I, I love it. So, all right, let's, let's look at this process here. Um, I guess we have to go back to basics, which is, um, it's, it's even a challenge, even a challenge, it's a challenge for me as much as for anybody else. Uh, after my near-death experiences, I realized my life is, is not for myself, but then it's real easy to get back into that trap of striving, of doing, of pushing, of wanting, of worrying, and, and to remember that, hey, wait, <laughs> it's an absolute miracle that I'm here. It's an absolute miracle that any of us are here. <laughs> Every moment you woke up in the morning, you got two gifts, each eye flapping open. Um, so how do we begin to remember this and then act on this, bring it into our lives? Yeah, well, you know, the way I look at it is that the ego will always is always waiting for an opportunity to take the wheel. That's what we <laughs> egos, egos do, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, they're but a protective it's a, mechanism. It's an exhausting way to live, mm-hmm. and it's often trying to hijack the spiritual experience. So the way I look at it is through prayers, that a really simple prayer, like saying to the divine, and I have a lot of these in the second book, mm-hmm. Changing Prayers, If you actually say directly to the divine, allow me to let go, allow me to let you take over, let the right actions arrive at the right time, help me to release my fear and let the universe do the actions through me. Because none of this is about being passive or just laying around hoping you get rescued by this force of love. It's you, you quoted at the very beginning, Michael, one of my favorite quotes, which is that life begins to happen through you rather than by you. So it's not about laying around. It's that the right actions begin to arise spontaneously through you. And I think prayer and meditation, I mean, I'm a big believer in just getting quiet so that the mind can start to settle. And then you can do these prayers of their invitation to the divine, Because I think often people keep themselves in such a state of Mm -hmm. striving and push that the divine doesn't even have room to come in. What would you define as the divine? Because some people think of of God, of source, of universe. What is divine? Well, I think all those are true. I mean, to me, I just think of it as a force of love, as a universal force of love. (laughs) Yeah, which then to me allows it to be independent of religious, you know, when somebody's like, well, my God is blah, blah, blah. My, and I'm like, oh, that's fine. 
but if you take it down to love, mm -hmm. you really don't have any arguments about it. That's it's just love. Mm -hmm. So before we were talking off air, and you said, "No, no, wait, tell this story when when we're rolling here." Before the interview, I've got my prep sheet, gone through, read the book, and I've got way too many things I want to talk about because you have beautiful stories and all these prayers. And I'm like, I want this prayer, I want that prayer. <laughs> and, and so I go and, and you know, take a shower, get myself, getting ready to get myself spiffed up for, for our talk. And I'm in the shower and I'm going, I have no idea. And I go, I give this up. I completely give this up. I have no idea where to go with this in, in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, it's yours. <laughs> and, and I heard, uh, um, read the last page of the book. Mm -hmm. I don't know, read the last page of the book. I read the last page of the book. And so I go and I grab the book uh, after I you know, finish showering stuff. And there are your top 10 questions that readers ask Tosha. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll be darned. Several of these are perfect. Just what I was looking for. Which I never would have gone back to the back of the book <laughs> mm -hmm. had I not said, you drive. That's it. You drive. That's it. Yeah, that's a great story because I think that's really how it happens. It's like just creating that space. That's why all these, there's so much... Not that I'm against coaching, but there's so much coaching that's out there that's about you have to make it happen and you have to do, I'll give you an example, like somebody was working with her business and she's like, got told she had to do a hundred cold calls and she had to go push this and force that and if you don't do it, nothing will occur. And I just said, well, what if you start with actually offering your business to the divine and saying, show me the first step? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's exactly what you did. You're like, <laughs> the minute you did it, the, it's just your own intuition emerging through that source of love saying, hey, open the back of the book. Much better than taking this giant boulder and trying to push it up the hill. Because if you ever get tired, stumble or fall, and there isn't somebody bigger than you, so to speak, with a rope belayed onto that thing, <laughs> it's going to roll right back over you. Yeah, you get crushed. <laughs> so, so let's talk then about one of, the, one of the things we talk about a lot on this show, and there's so many different interpretations, um, law of attraction. And uh, what's the trouble with the law of attraction? I can see where you're going already. but <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Some, I get asked this a lot, and I think sometimes it gets misunderstood. I think the law of attraction has a part of it that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And useful, which is that we attract according to our vibration. How, because if you have, you keep your vibration high, you will attract things connected to that. If your vibration is constantly in anger and victimization and darkness, you will attract according to that. The problem is that to me, a couple things. One is that because it's often used to just give a shopping list then to the universe. I call it like the universe as Costco. Okay, well, the law of attraction is going to work. So here's all the following things I, the small self, want. And let me fixate on those until I get them and I'll visualize them and I'll feel them and then I'll get them. One of the problems with that is that there's often a divine plan coming from love itself, which is far beyond what the ego can fixate on. For so, example, so in other words, to, to break it down in simplest terms, we may have this beautiful shopping list for Costco, but what if we were supposed to be shopping instead at the Taj Mahal? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or what if, I mean, I'll give you an example that just happened. This Please. woman was, uh, was telling me, like, she was desperately wanted a relationship. Mm -hmm. And she was just, you know, she had like a vision board in every house. And she was just focused and focused and kept telling the universe what this person needed to be like and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile two years went by and there was nothing and what she finally got to and she was telling me it was coming out of reading outrageous openness she realized that at that moment what she needed far more than a relationship was to learn how to be very very happy inside of herself alone and then the relationship mm. could come now a shopping <laughs> list you gotta get her that and and that fixating you know she was talking to various people who were like well you must not be doing it right you must be blocking something you get that dialogue a lot but by offering it back to the divine she felt this voice inside simply saying 
you have never been content just on your own two feet, make some time and do that, and then the right person will come at the right time. So do you see what I mean? It completely shifted the focus off of, I want this, I want this. And, and then eventually she met the person, but it was after having two years mm-hmm. where she wasn't trying to visualize and manifest it anymore. She was finally listening to what the divine was saying, which is get the time inside first. And so it often is leaving out the, the vast vision that love can have of what's really needed. And the focus is just on when's Costco going to deliver and why are they late? So how do we know that we, <laughs> I want to say, how do we know that we don't know best? Um, how do we let go without, um, yeah, how do we just let it all go and say, you know, I want my grandest vision, you drive. Because there's the concern there that, well, yeah. I'm not going to go anywhere then. Well, but again, it's coming out of the illusion that it's my grandest vision, meaning the ego's grandest vision. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is the first step is the offering. It's not getting rid of desires. Desires come out of having a human body, right? Mm-hmm. So to me, let's say there's a desire like you would like your show to be known around the world as the greatest show ever. That's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Let's just pretend. Then that's, Thank you. <laughs> but there's an attachment to that mm-hmm. coming from the ego. And the ego's pretending that the show belongs to it, as mm-hmm. opposed to the fact that if it really is a spiritual show, it truly belongs to the divine. Mm-hmm. So you're not soliciting God or love to say, come do my bidding, make this what I want. Mm-hmm. Instead, you're saying, I'm now offering, just like you offered the interview. You're not offering the entire show to the divine and saying, this is a desire I have. Let me give it to you for you to do (laughs) what you wish. And it's not saying for you to make it the greatest show in the world. You're saying, show me what you wish. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things like the universe actually blocks in the success from getting past a certain place for a while until the person learns surrender. And then the success comes because otherwise it would just be one more thing for the ego to feed on. I've thought about that because our show has been outrageously successful and then I've watched it hit blocks and then jump past and hit blocks. And, right. and, and, and I know and I can tell energetically how I'm doing on a day, how the show will be doing without even looking at anything. So first I learned how important it is to stay in that space, to let it all go. And then, boy, the monkey mind is squirrely. So you do well at something, and all of a sudden you worry about how you're doing well and will you be able to keep that up unless you let go of it. (laughs) I mean, I have a a suggestion that since we're chatting, Mm -hmm. which is you get rid of the word my, and you stop thinking of it as my show. Mm, Yes. And you think of it as a show you're running on behalf of love. Because then you don't have to keep going, am I going to lose it, am I going to prevail, you're kind of like running it on behalf of love and love knows all the steps that need to happen. We have a little MP3 tag you put on, on each year's show and it says, you know, who's the director, who's the this, who's the that. And uh, it's either producer, creator, whatever it is, whatever the top level. Um, and it says, uh, Jessica Lee, my wife, and the universe. <laughs> yeah, I, and, I'm not and, even and, on there. <laughs> no, but, but nonetheless, you still know what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, it's really, you're just, It'll be the easiest little shift for you to make. Mm-hmm. It'll be so easy. So how do we all do this then? What's, what's, um, let's, let's look at a couple key steps that we can take to um, allow the divine plan to come through us. Well, I think, I think we're talking about it. Like you can, let's take the example. It'll be different for each person. Mm-hmm. If you think about something that you direly want, you know, like whether it's a business success or whether it's a relationship or whatever this thing is, it's a new home. And if you take that thing and you're not, it has nothing to do with getting rid of desires. Nothing wrong with having that desire. So my wife is out in Sedona today. She's been very sick, mold toxicity. She's healing. We'd really like to get to a drier place. So she's out in Sedona today okay. and going, 
I would love to move here. Okay, so let me use that as an example. So put that out there. Rather, <laughs> but again, like law of attraction would just say fixate on mm -hmm. your in Sedona, see the perfect home. That's all law of attraction. Put it on this the vision is, board. This, and is, this is different. This isn't anything I do. This to me mm -hmm. is like the divine already knows and has already selected the perfect place for you guys to be yes. living. And if you're not pushing it to say, but I need it to be this, I need it to be this. If you start to say, I'm offering, I somehow my hands always just go wide open. Saying, I like that. I'm but offering. Between a push and an offer is a big is. energetic difference. Yes. And think about it that, you know, someone said to me once, they said, most teaching, even law of attraction, involves some grasping for people. Mm -hmm. They say they're not, but they're grasping. I want it. I want it. Why hasn't it come yet? Think about how much can come in your hands when you're busy grasping. <laughs> they're now closed. <laughs> and as soon as your hands are open, you're open into receiving. So like for the location thing, and I'm actually in a bit of a possible move myself. So what I've been doing is I've been saying the perfect new home is already selected, mm -hmm. divinely selected. I'll be shown the right actions at the right time. And give, grant me the patience until those actions are fully shown and let me know that you've already decided 100% where I'm going and that the perfect place is picked. And the you that you're talking to, again, it's not this guy in the sky. You're speaking to love, which is what you're composed of yourself. But it's different than the ego's agenda. It's vaster. So, and we've had on uh, Dr. Amit Goswami, uh, Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, you know, quantum you know, mechanics, looking at this at, at a quantum level. Um, uh, and, and, you know, if you looked at the work by uh, uh, Dr. Emoto with water, uh, love is an energy, is a frequency. Uh, it, it's as real as, well, as the computer, the microphone, whatever you're listening, the iPhone you're listening to this on. Yeah, and you know, I'll give you another example if you want, which is uh, you, you then start to be able to bless the obstacles mm -hmm. as opposed to thinking of the obstacles as something that's in the way of the ego's plan. And I mean, something that just happened for me is I had a desire to go to Mexico because I liked Mexico a lot. And I was right on the verge of going to Mexico in November and the whole trip just fell apart. It was like the universe said, uh, you're not going anywhere. And I knew from doing this work, rather than being frustrated and mad about it, it was like, all right, you're going to come up with something else that is going to make this irrelevant. And sure enough, it's turning out that that would be the worst place for me to be right now. And instead, I'm going in January to Europe. So it's like I wouldn't be available to even do the other thing. You know, and I think that's the thing is you start to bless the obstacles if you're only viewing it as the universe is here mm -hmm. to provide my vision board material, that's the, that's <laughs> that's very the cost. very small, of, yes. That's the cost. That's very limited, exactly. It's a very tiny corner. Mm -hmm. If you blast that open and you're saying, I'm here to serve love as opposed to the universe is here to serve me and my list, then the obstacles are only rerouting you to something better. We had, we had an American Tibetan Lama a few days ago, uh, uh, Lama Surya Das, who talked about the concept of remindfulness, about reminding yourself to be mindful. <laughs> and so here, what are, what are some ways that we can remind or train ourselves? Because this is a retraining to go from okay. the my, me, want, grasp to the offer, give up, let go. This is a whole mind flip that doesn't okay. happen overnight. It is. I agree. And I think, you know, some of it, if you think of inviting the divine, this force of love, as an ally, not like <laughs> something that's going to get in the way yeah. of what your small self wants, but you're inviting it as an ally. So I even think really simple prayers like, help me to center, help me to trust love. Mm -hmm. help me to know that everything that needs to come will always come. You know, just very simple prayers of invitation. The second book, Change Me Prayer, is filled with them. And, and they're in OO o as well. You're inviting this force to do the doing through you as opposed to, I mean, even what he said, I think is great. 
But it's still meaning that it's your responsibility as an ego to kind of keep reminding yourself. And I would say this is allow the divine to help you remember. There's Do you see a, what I mean? It's, yeah. it's different. There's one that, that uh, I wrote down so many, but this one was, uh, please show me your divine will in this matter and send a clear sign that gives me the proper direction. And if for some reason I'm about to head in the wrong way, <laughs> please, please stop me. That's one of my favorites. I use that a lot, you know, because sometimes people will say, oh, you think you're getting directed to do this. Like I thought I was getting directed to go to Mexico. And then mm -hmm. the minute I started trying to line it up, the entire thing fell apart. And I was doing that prayer. I was saying, hey, this is hitting too many obstacles. If you don't want me to go, make it clear. And the entire thing fell apart. And then, you know, it's because you're being rerouted. Mm hmm. So can you tell us what a uh, worry box is? Yeah, it's actually called a God box. Uh, but it's... Uh, the, you know, the gold box, gold box, right? God, no, the God, God box. God, okay. Yeah, God box. But it's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all related. It's basically that when you have these things that are keeping you up, you know, like everybody, it's just part of being human, I think. Mm -hmm. These worries come. Some of them are habitual and they just keep repeating. You can actually write them down and you create a box that is um, a container for them. And they're, they're a way to practice offering. So let's say, you know, you have this part that's just really worried about your business. And you start to write down, rather than giving a list to the divine of like, this is the X number of dollars I want you to bring me and all that. You're actually writing down on the paper for example, this business now fully belongs, belongs to the divine and you can even write down all your fears and all your concerns about it. And then you put it in this God box. And from that point on, whenever you start to compulsively worry about it, you remind yourself that it's in the box and it's being handled. <laughs> and it sounds very basic, but it it's amazing. It sounds liberating how, to me, it though. Is, that's what I was going to say. It's one of those, sometimes the simplest things are the most liberating. Mm -hmm. So let's go from there to some true liberation, letting go of Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was in the part of the book that's actually still, I love Seinfeld, but I had about a million of the old VHSs that were taking up huge parts of my closet. Mm -hmm. And that's in the part of the book that's about letting go of clutter. And, and that's, what, that's what I'd love you to talk about. Yeah. So I, to me, this is just one more piece of the story is sometimes people say, I'm wanting to open up, but all these things feel like they're in the way. And when I teach classes on this, which people can find out on my website, um, I'll often start them by people cleaning out their homes. And again, you don't have to do it from that place of the ego going, oh, my God, I'm terrified to let things go. You offer the act of cleaning out your home to the divine and you say, allow me, show me mm -hmm. what I need to let go of and what I need to keep. And your own intuition will show you. So my this Seinfeld such, episodes had to go. This is such a mind shift because then it can be instead of, you know, this is the whole, this is the whole concept of the talk here, grasping, holding on to pieces of being open and offering. If you're wanting to grab and hold on to those Seinfeld clutch, first off, you can't make room for anything else. But if That's you go, it. I'm going to give you, maybe you need to listen to, to or watch the Seinfeld reruns <laughs> more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, it was true just in the sense of they were something, first of all, you can get them online. So like, what was I keeping them all for? Oh, yeah. But also, it was just like one of those things you don't have to let go of anything that gives you great pleasure. But the truth was, I wasn't watching them anymore. Mm -hmm. And we all have things like that. You know, they're uh, love letters from 20 years ago that are keeping you still tied to a relationship that's been over forever or, you know, magazines that are filling up an entire corner of the house that are never being read. And it's kind of amazing how much releasing those things, it's not superstition. It just opens up space in your psyche. Uh, another one similar to that you talk about is having, <laughs> this one's going to sound so sacrilege, having a sacred fire with your vision boards. Or, uh, yes, I, <laughs> I'm right about that, yeah. 
Now, again, I'm with these, I'm... But this I'm can gonna, be liberating because we're so wrapped up. The reason I'm speaking to you about this is we get so yeah. attached to the outcome. Well, and that's and these are all ways to get out of that. And that story in the book is specifically about this woman. Mm-hmm. It's a good story because she came to me. Please share. <laughs> and she came to me and she's like, you know, I'm so spiritual and all I really want is to know my divine nature. And on the other hand, she is showing me this vision board that has, I will make a million dollars and here's the guy I'll end up with. And blah, blah, blah. she's like, oh whole big list Mm -hmm. of everything that her vision board that she's staring at every day and frustrated because a lot of those things were not happening and so you know I said to her I said look your your longings for divinity that's what you started talking to me about this is what I find is often people that are old souls Mm -hmm. quote unquote they are here to do more than treat the universe as Costco they're here to truly offer everything and then allow the, their own lives to be used. And if, you're, if so, you're drawn to listening to this show, you're probably an old soul. I would say <laughs> that you probably is your demographic. So I think that's the deal. And, and so she actually did. She took the vision board and she burnt it because she realized she wasn't even open to what the universe might want to bring. And ironically, you just have to notice, Michael, once she burnt it, yeah. a number of the things that actually did occur because she was no longer obsessed with forcing them to occur. <laughs> it's the truth. Another fun one. What's the breadcrumb trail? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. You know, to me, it's that when any action is mm-hmm. offered to the divine, mm-hmm. to love, then you start to get shown this trail. When any desire is offered to the divine, you start to get shown the trail to follow. Can you and, give an example of this? Yeah. I'm, I'll, you know, I can tell you when I, for example, when I moved into the apartment that I live in now, it was, you know... This is the this, one you've been in for 15 years or longer this, now? 16, this 17? Is the one I, this is the one I've been in for a, for a long time, yeah. But when I first found it, it was during this time where people were saying, oh, you know, this is very hard rental market. There's nothing out there. Maybe you should visualize everything you want. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's going to say the perfect place is picked. Mm-hmm. And I'll be guided to it at the right time. And then what happened, and this occurs sometimes with offering, nothing happened. <laughs> oh, no. It <laughs> at first, and it's becoming comfortable mm-hmm. with sitting in the birth canal of waiting to be shown the right action. So if you're always in that place of doing, pushing, grasping, you might get like, oh, I offered it and nothing happened in five minutes, so God must not be listening. But in fact, then a series of events occurred that guided me straight to this apartment, and it wasn't because I had to look at 15 and weigh them and compare them and make a decision, which do I want? I literally just walked in the apartment and that was it. And that, to me, is the breadcrumb trail. But you have to have the willingness to offer it over to be shown the actions. And the other reason I call it that is Mm -hmm. because people do get this confused with passivity. And they think, oh, well, what if I offer it and then nothing occurs? That must mean this doesn't work. And I'm like, no, if you genuinely offer it, the right actions get shown at the right time. But sometimes the universe is lining things up. So how do that's you, what you're waiting for. How do you hear it clearly? You share an, an interesting story about being uh, stuck at an airport in Phoenix and they're asking for people to... Uh, how do you hear these things? Can you share that story and how do we tune in more clearly? Yeah, yeah. I was at this airport and it was during the holidays and they were doing that thing that they do sometimes with the airlines of like, we'll give you a free ticket if anybody's giving up their seat. We've overbooked. You can have a free round trip ticket, blah, blah, blah. And I kept feeling inside myself. There's this word in Sanskrit called the spanda and it's like this inner leap. You Mm -hmm. often feel it like you're excited to do something. Your body's like... So I was feeling this leap, like I was supposed to stand up and offer my seat, and I couldn't intellectually make sense of that because um, I had to be home the next day, and I couldn't give up the seat. So I basically sat there, didn't offer it, 
-hmm. And then another guy took it. And then I found out later that in the end, he got to fly back on the same plane with me and get the free ticket because serious. I guess it was even two free tickets. Yes, two free tickets. This guy got the the bonus. (laughs) He got the bonus and the universe was trying to give it to me, but I wasn't trusting because the inner leap, which is so often true, Mm -hmm. that inner place where you're like, oh, I'm excited to go talk to that person or I'm excited to, often that it comes through a place of excitement an inner knowing, I wasn't listening. So I didn't care. I was happy he got the tickets. But it, was a, it was a good lesson. How do we cultivate that then? How do we grow that? Ooh, that's the butterflies I've got in my belly that say I need to take action. I think the more, two things. I, I actually think a part of it is through the prayers that mm-hmm. the more you begin to genuinely offer things rather than just saying, I want this, I want this, let me fixate harder and harder and you actually offer it over, Mm -hmm. this inner connection, it's that you're not offering it to somebody in the sky, right? You're offering it to love inside you. So the connection to love inside you gets deeper and stronger and begins to come through as your own intuition. And the other thing I really think is even if people take five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day and get quiet, as opposed to being in that place of the endless push, that quiet combined with the prayers of offering are really what do it. And that, for anybody listening, I can speak personally on this one, that that extra five or ten minutes of pushing or trying to make, uh, <laughs> I've given up, I will give up ownership, to the, the business that we are running that is not ours. <laughs> the show that is owned by the divine. But that five or ten minutes of striving, if I instead step back and take that five or ten minutes, That's just it. like taking back and taking that shower, <laughs> That's it, it makes so much more of a difference. That's it. And I think because there's such fixation on uh, striving and mm-hmm. pushing, mm-hmm. people think it's like, do more, push more, get more. In fact, it's what you're saying. If you step back and recenter and then offer it back, you can get a solution to something overnight that you could be striving for for months. It's a completely different recalibration of your energy. And it also means along those same lines, um, it can stop, prevent, maybe that's not the right term, but we'll go with it anyway, prevent you from spending all this wasted energy and time going in the wrong direction. Like like your prayer, um, if I'm about to head the wrong way, please, please stop me. Yeah, it's really the truth. And, you know, now that I live this way, mm-hmm. when I look back on how my life was before I lived this way, I was constantly exhausted. And because the, the pushing, the endless pushing, it burns out your adrenals. It burns out all kinds of parts of your body because they don't get to rest. They're always in that hyper alertness of what if I lose this and what if I don't get this? And the irony is you're creating so much more space to receive mm-hmm. from this that you're actually receiving more doing less efforting. That's why this book is the greatest gift because you get this <laughs> book in your hands and you've been trying so hard. You've been working. You've been pushing. You've got the weight on your shoulders, the weight of the world. You and you get this book and it says, stop it. <laughs> and, 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 and here's how. how to stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I have heard other people uh, say stop it, but they wouldn't say how. Like if somebody would, that was part of how the book got created. Somebody would say, lots of spiritual teachers say surrender. And I would sit there and be like, how? Mm -hmm. You're not saying how. And I do think these tools show you how. So we'll we'll wrap things up pretty quickly here, and then we'll we'll jump into a meditation, which will air separately. How did Outrageous Openness, that title, come to be? I don't believe that was the original choice. Oh, yeah. Boy, you're really digging up some of those. (laughs) I had fun. (laughs) Uh, Actually, I think it was supposed to be called Outrageous Optimism. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad it didn't work out. Uh, But it was like very different. Exactly. But I think that was where we were headed. And it was literally like the day before it was supposed to go to press. Mm -hmm. We found out that there already was a book with that title. And so I actually did what you and I are 
talking about, which is rather than stress about it and push, I said, I'm going to go get a pedicure. And somehow in the course of this pedicure, there's going to be a stroke of inspiration because basically I had eight hours for a different title to come. So I'm getting this pedicure. (laughs) sort of saying to the divine, show me what you want, because this is the key, rather than how can I stress out and figure it out from me, the small self. It's so reverse. You know, I've it's got this huge opposite. decision to make. I've been working on this book, presumably for years. A book isn't an overnight thing, and now I've got to change it in eight hours. I'll go get well, a that's, pedicure. <laughs> that's, that's again, because again, if you're thinking, not my book, mm-hmm. not my problem, mm-hmm. I'm here to serve the divine. You clearly decided to the last minute to tell me that this is the wrong title, show me what you want. And when I went to get the nail polish, Mm -hmm. I just thought, okay, pulled out some random color that I liked. And I don't even remember the exact words, but the word open was in the title of the (laughs) nail polish. And that was, you know, I just thought, well, I guess it could be outrageous openness and not optimism. And it really is a much better title. So came from a pedicure. I love it. So a, uh, a wrap-up question we have for all of our guests, which is um, what brings you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo factor? Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. That's hard to pick one thing. Um, you know, what, what comes to mind actually is I love spreading the word about this work it's one of the things that actually gives me the greatest happiness because i felt so much suffering from people doing the focus that we're talking about where you're attaching and holding and striving i live that way myself with great suffering i listen to so many people suffering and it's pretty joyous to get to show people another way it makes me really happy Yay. <laughs> All right. I could have said just going dancing at a bar because I like that too. <laughs> and which is also <laughs> openness. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people go to find out more, to find your book, and to find some from prayers from you? Um, you know, they just go to uh, toshasilver.com, mm-hmm. just my name, the website. They can order both books there. There's a something called the Living Outrageous Openness Forum. They'll see that on the homepage. And that's actually an ongoing community. That's a school where I teach how to do all this. And people from all over the world are in it. And anyone can join us. Beautiful. So, and we'll have links to that on our InspireNationShow.com website as well. So we can drive them right over to you. Great. So, thank well, you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll record afterwards. <laughs> and, really and fun to talk to you. It's really fun to talk to you too. And everyone, I would get this book because there, there are lots of, lots of great schools of thought out there about how to bring about what seems to be best for you in your life. But I think this book does an amazing job at helping you realize, and, and Derek Rydell, who we just had on, on Emergence, he, he also shares the same concept because there really is nothing new under the sun. We're all beautiful acorns with a majestic oak inside of us, but sort of like the caterpillar, if it wants to be a better caterpillar, it never realizes there's a butterfly waiting for us. Outrageous openness helps you let go of your caterpillarness. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> to get the book (laughs) all right for everyone out there this is michael sandler saying be well have fun get outrageous openness and shine bright (laughs) Woohoo! thank you thank you everyone thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed it be sure to like like below also leave your comments have some real fun with it subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos more interviews coming up And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. (laughs) Woohoo!